Hey folks, we got this cool little minimal camera here, the new Canon V10, but what is this thing and is it worth it? Let's check it out. So super easy to use, perfect for the beginners, but also more experienced folks who want to get away from the cell phone a little more and have an easy to use dedicated camera in their pocket. I had a flip cam that reminded me of this many, many years ago and it was very helpful as a new filmmaker to get my video chops down with framing and getting creative with what you have. And this Canon V10 took me back to that same old feeling. This little guy might also remind you of the just released Go 3 with the flip up screen, the boxy body. Who copied who? Who knows? Who cares? But this is a way different beast than the Go 3 because this has that coveted 1 inch sensor inside that puts it in the realm of the Cybershot RX Zeros and other point and shoots. In fact, this is the exact same sensor found in the Canon G7X3 that retails at 650 but this has a fixed lens at a little wider, it's 18 millimeters, and in a form factor that just makes filming yourself super easy. The usual story, a game of give and take, what features to get and what price point they need. Some strange decisions were definitely made with this, so let's go over a few and see if this Canon V10 is right for you. All the advertisements about the V10 scream that this is a vlogging camera, and it does have a bunch of unique features to help you out. But let's not kid ourselves, this is an under $500 camera, so you can imagine what the footage is like. Very action cam style, crushed colors, auto modes trying to correct and turning the image to mush. But hey, for a lot of stuff these days, no one cares anymore, and sometimes it's all about getting that shot when you can. One helpful, pretty thoughtful feature is this built-in stand. Comes in handy in a pinch, but I don't really like that looking up the nose type of shot that this stand kind of promotes. So you gotta get a real tripod or something to that extent and it'll come in handy with the thread mount located on the bottom so super easy to connect it to any type of doodad you got. So some notes from the field. I would definitely recommend getting one of these ball head uh, attachments for it. Makes a great handle and also you can get now these little bottom magnetic pieces that now you can stick this thing anywhere you want. That's one of the nice things about the Insta Go 3. There's magnets all over the place. You can just stick it wherever you want. Well, with one of these now, you can do that too. This is the Aperture ball head. This came with the MC Pro. I know you can get this, but you're going to need to buy a separate little magnetic mount. It just screws in like that. Super handy, and it gives you a little handle almost that I've really been digging. Now you can kind of... Uh, move this around a little easier. Make sure you really, you know, get it up high so where you get that nice, you get that line of sight. You want to keep this lens right on your eye line. That kind of looks the best. One really nice breath of fresh air is that this camera boots up really fast, like instantly, and it is ready to shoot. Always ready to go, where something like the Insta360 cams have a bit of a boot up time of five seconds, and that waiting can just kill the mood or you just lose your shot altogether. So nice fast shooting with this, probably since there really isn't much to the operating system, it can just fire up in under a second. You do have a mic input, but no headphone jack. One workaround that is a transmitter that has the headphone jack like the DJI wireless mics. And at least you can toggle between the displays and check out some audio meters so you can make sure you're not blasting the audio. But let's check out how this sounds when you are using an external mic like the DJI wireless mics or a Rode mic. Got some wireless DJI mics. I really like these things. You get two lavaliers plus a transmitter. You can put your headphone jack in there. It is really nice that the Canon at least gives you some audio meters so that you can check. And if you just put it in auto mode, it does a pretty good job anyway. So this is if you just kind of wanted to get sound while you walk and talk. And I could be over here talking about this oak tree. This is Algerian oak hybrid. It's a big oak tree, beautiful place. We're here in Davis Arboretum. I love this spot. If you're just wanting to record on the fly with no mics, with these internal mics that are located on the top, it's gonna sound like this. So this is auto mode right now and we're using the internal microphones and as you can hear it sounds really tinny, really flat. We've got a bunch of freeway noise from behind us going on but 
if I just run it through one of these new AI noise reduction tools, it's gonna go from this to this. And now it sounds like I'm recording in a little studio. I mean, it's really amazing what this new AI noise reduction tools are doing for us. You're in the easy audio club with this stuff. It's because these days audio is much more important than video quality. Autofocus is not the best on the V10. It relies on that older contrast based autofocus system. So you definitely notice it's struggling often. There are a few AF modes that are included like face and then just a general box area if you're doing some product demo type shots. It gets the job done, but you will see some hunting going on. There's no waterproofing on this. Do not let this fool you, even though it may look like an action camera. No jumping into the pool with it. You do have a USB port for charging, file transfers, or even using this as a webcam, which is a great little side use for this camera. As my Apple Studio monitor has a very poor webcam, and with the V10 connected now, the image looks pretty great. And this has very little latency going on. I could not even notice anything significant. I just plugged it into the Mac. It recognizes it right away. And there's also an app from Canon for this where you can connect for live remote shooting, adjusting your settings in manual mode, audio level display for manual adjustments, even live streaming, just a ton of other handy tools. If you are shooting in 4K, which you should, a high-speed SD card is needed. I got stuck the first time using a slower card, and the camera just kind of stops working after a few seconds. It's like getting a new toy without batteries. So I recommend these SanDisk Extreme cards. You can get them up to one terabyte, and SanDisk really is the only SD cards I trust these days. I'll leave a link down below to the one terabyte version that I've been using in this. So with decent lighting, the 18 millimeter with f2.8 aperture, does a pretty good job for vlogging and selfies, giving you that almost wide angle feel. Once you start getting into low light or indoor shooting though, the footage can fall apart pretty fast in auto mode. So definitely a certain type of camera for a certain type of situation. To keep the footage consistent, I always shot in manual mode most times, trying to treat this like an actual normal camera. Auto mode will be changing the shutter speed and ISO constantly. So as you're walking around, walking, it clunkily adjusts to surroundings, but really who cares these days? Everyone's pretty used to seeing that type of footage. You've got a built-in ND filter, which helps out a lot. There's only three stops, but this is another one of those coveted pieces of the puzzle that when the big cameras skimp on these built-in NDs, people get pissed. So this will help you maintain a low shutter speed when shooting outside. ND filters are kind of like putting on sunglasses over your lens when you need it. So for me, it feels like this is the camera you grab for your outdoor adventures and your easy B-roll camera or something like a dash cam type of shot. These little cameras make you get creative with their limits. Another strange thing about this camera is it's starting launch alongside a cage from Small Rig. You get this package for the V10, which gives you a much needed lens cover cap. Lots of these smaller cameras now come with no lens protection these days, or it's some extra piece of gear to buy, and Canon did not disappoint, leaving you hanging when all they need to do is just give you a small little rubber lens cap. That would have cost them 25 cents to make. All this chipping away at things is really starting to bug me. I mean, it makes me think they want you to break this. They want you to scratch your lens and destroy your dreams, so you rush out and buy another one. You know, it's the little things in life that matter, like an included lens cap. It's not hard. No time-lapse mode either, which would have been so easy for them to implement, as you can switch from movie mode to camera and take these huge 20 megabyte photos with it as well, but it's a really poor photo mode. It's like hidden away, and pretty much there are no settings to adjust other than brightness and selfie timer. Time-lapse mode is a staple for cameras in the size bracket. So maybe it will show up in an update. Definitely a big red flag on reasons for me to use this at professional shoots. Uh, this would have been a great little camera to just stick up in the corner. You record a time lapse of the whole event. I and mean, maybe we can get Magic Lantern to hack this thing. So overall, I did really like running around filming with the V10. People don't really know it's a camera at all. It's not a smartphone. It doesn't look like a normal camera. So I was able to easily get some candid shots and some street shots without people really taking notice I was sticking a camera in their face. Maybe this would be good for a great little street vlog camera. 
Super small and unassuming. No one has had time to see this type of camera before. But is it worth 450 or I don't know about that. I could see this thing going for around 300, 350 bucks. So wait for it to go on sale or check out the used ones I saw a couple at B&H and Adorama for 365. It's a fun little camera and if you like little cameras, check it out because the footage is better than most of your average action cameras. And this makes you think a little more creatively about getting unique shots due to its small unassuming form factor. And it doubles as a great webcam if that is something you need also. Also, if you know someone looking to get into shooting videos and editing, the V10 might be the perfect training wheels to shoot a lot of different type of contents from travel, cooking, vlogging, YouTube videos. I mean, this could really do it all and get your chops ready for the upgrade to those big cameras next when you're ready for that bump up in image quality and manual controls. The content creation scene is definitely changing really fast these days, and this might be all you need to make your video dreams come true. So thanks for checking out the V10 with me. Please hit that subscribe button so we can stay in touch on other new content creator gear and tools. So until next time, folks, take care.